All right, so uh, Nate has agreed to join us and speak a little bit about the Roch Strong web app that was developed uh, very, very quickly. I can say that because uh, I was uh, involved in it as well. But what we really wanted to do was create something to, to really help out our entrepreneurs and small businesses as fast as possible. And Nate stepped up in a big way and provided his technical experience and his leadership to really get this off the ground and successful and turn it around in, into the community in just 48 hours. So uh, without further ado, uh, here's Nate. So I guess I'll just share a little bit about the story of how this came to be. And I may have to rewrite Jamie's history slightly. Um, it uh, was about 48 hours of building, but um, we were, we talked about it over the course of about a week. So um, you can only get the app at rotstrong.com. If you haven't already looked it up, if you want to look it up, you can do that. Um, so kind of how did this whole thing start? Well, um, on Tuesday, uh, March 17th, I contacted Jamie and Amanda and said, hey, our team has been talking about uh, a few ideas and wants to do something to help. Um, as a small business owner myself, I understand how crushing it is to have essentially the economy shut down right now. Um, and a lot of our customers or other businesses we know are being hit even harder if they own a restaurant or something like that. So I reached out to Jamie uh, about noon on Tuesday and said, hey, what do you think about building something, maybe a website or an app of some kind? And uh, Jamie said, yeah, actually, man, Amanda and I were just talking about doing something this morning. So it was good timing. And we said, hey, let's try it. Um, you know, it's not going to be uh, the most beautiful, perfect thing ever, but we might as well um, do what we can to help. And so on Wednesday, the full effort began. So we collaborated with some local business hubs like Ready and RDA and the Chamber of Commerce to ask them for help getting access to their data and some of the information that they had already been collecting. And we leveraged some off the shelf tools uh, in order to do this more quickly. And we just worked really hard and threw in you know, a lot of creativity and Jamie and Amanda worked really hard on a lot of the content. And on Wednesday, I made a note to myself that I felt stuck. Um, I felt really stuck because we, there's just a lot of stuff going on. I'm trying to keep client stuff moving. And at the same time, um, I had promised Jamie and Amanda to make this amazing app, or at least an app. Uh, and, and I had really nothing to show at that point, and they're working away on content. Um, and I was just trying to figure out how to put the pieces together. And then on Wednesday evening, working really late, and then into Thursday, had sort of a creative breakthrough, and it was more or less built on Thursday. And then Friday, March 20th, we launched the app and it just so happened to be my birthday, which was ice cream at home by myself. Um, well, I, with my wife and kids, which was fun, but we had planned a big, huge party and it didn't happen, but that's all right. We launched the app on that Friday. So basically in a period of a week, it went from no idea at all to idea to launch. Um, and the goal, really, the, the idea here and the goal was to just help spread awareness about the ways to support local businesses, many of which are still open, were still open. Um, you know, they're getting creative with online orders and um, various ways to still do business. And they were just struggling and still are struggling to get the word out. And so our goal was really just to try to help um, amplify uh, the good work that these businesses are already doing and in ways to help them. And again, we felt the time was short to do something. The need was immediate. So there really was no time for fancy solutions. And we, we I also want to just point out and recognize there are some other really cool things being done in Rochester and other, th other people have stepped up to do creative things like the, the shirts that Jamie just mentioned. Um, and I think all of that is fantastic as well. So we really just saw this as, a way that we could help um and uh so we did so with that let me show you a brief demo i see a few people looked like they were looking at their phone so i assume a few people were already uh checking it out <laughs> um 
So what does it do? It is not an app that you can get in the app store. You do have to go to rotstrong.com. And that was partly happy accident, but all really part of the plan because it takes a week to get something through the app store to get it approved, first of all. And then just to build like an actual native app takes months to do anything useful. Um, so we leveraged some off the shelf tools and built essentially what is a, a web app. So it's really just a website that operates on a phone, kind of like an app. Um, and that also then enables us to have a, a web version, although um, Jamie hates on this version regularly because it, it's a phone stuck on his computer screen. And <laughs> he says it doesn't work on his iPad, but it definitely works on his iPad. You can just use your phone on your iPad. Anyway, um, our intent was again, to be very fast, to get something out there, to make it work on every device and not have to mess with app store approvals or any of that. So um, the sections of the app, we have eat, shop and donate, do, resources, and then about. Uh, the eat section is pretty obvious. It's all the restaurants that are uh, still open and the things that they're offering. When we launched the app, we had a couple dozen, I would say, and there have been a ton added since then. Um, so at the bottom of each section in the app, there are three special tabs, report an update, add a listing, or start a fundraiser. We would really, really appreciate all of your help and ideas and input. If you notice something that is incorrect here in the app, if you wouldn't mind, just take a minute and report an update. Um, we would really appreciate it. So we can try to keep this as up to date as possible. With a lot of these businesses, things are just changing every day and that's just the nature of it right now. Um, so we're doing our best, um, but we appreciate your input. Shop and donate is also pretty straightforward. It's local shops um, and other businesses where you maybe they aren't open like Air Insanity uh, for obvious reasons, but you can order gift cards online and, and book some things in advance. Um, you can also donate to the Collider Foundation. I uh, just hit the wrong button. The back button, by the way, the back button, uh, yeah, it doesn't work inside of here. That's what I just did. So we have a whole list of, of places that you can shop and support in here. Uh, and then in the do section, is just trying to help, you know, give all of us really ideas on things that we can do while we're all stuck at home and maybe working and unfortunately some of us not able to work. Uh, so, you know, things like uh, Sherpa, who's done a, a 1 million cops presentation before, um, linking to them, linking to there's some online uh, yoga classes happening with Yoga Tribe. There are some ways that you can get connected with United Way and do some volunteering. So there's just, there's a, a variety of things here in the do section. You can even take music lessons. In the resources, we really just wanted to pull together some of the local resources that are available for um, businesses in particular uh, and nonprofits. Um, so the resources include, you know, some of the things that United Way is doing. And what's been neat to see through this whole process is there are, there are some organizations and some resources and some tools available that I certainly didn't know about. Um, and there's some brand new things that have been popping up. So it's been pretty cool to help spread the word about these things. Um, and shameless self plug um, easy board is is a new product that we launched and we're also offering free help to nonprofits um, right now with technology things um, and there's my mug I guess so there's there's some like local national stuff on here but primarily local um, and uh, some of it you probably know about and some of it you probably don't and then the about section is probably the most boring section of the whole app, but basically just says, hey, here's the app. Here's why we built it. Here's who built it. And that's, that's pretty much it. Um, so that's a tour of the app. Again, we would greatly appreciate if you would provide your input, your ideas, your updates um, by reporting 
changes to us, that would be fantastic. Um, what do the stats look like so far? So there are 6,100 users. Uh, currently, there are over 35,000 page views in the app. Uh, over 100 businesses and nonprofits have requested to be listed in the app um, through the form that we were just looking at there at the bottom. Um, we've had 26 people submit information updates. And hopefully, as more of you go through and use this app and find things that could be changed or improved, hopefully this number will go up. And a totally useless stat, we have had 22 countries use the app, although only people in Rochester it's really useful for. So there you go. Measure what matters. That one doesn't matter, but I thought it was interesting. Um, sparking others. So I, I thought it's, it's pretty cool to see. I think in general in life, when you take action, you start to see it spark others to action too. And so there's a couple interesting things that I've seen happen. Um, Forgiving is a local um, platform for setting up fundraisers. And they actually decided to, um, we didn't ask them to do this, but we did talk with them about what we were doing. And then they decided to offer absolute zero fees. In fact, they're covering the, the credit card transaction fees even um, out of their own pocket. So if you do want to set up a fundraiser for anything right now, uh, forgiving is what I would definitely check out. It is absolutely free. They don't take a cut right now. Um, and then there was a similar app to Rotch Strong launched in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I posted about it on social media and then a contact there in Omaha said, hey, I want to do that for Omaha. And so within a week, they had an Omaha version of this app launched as well. And then I had also shared the app with um, a chamber of commerce, a national chamber of commerce association. And about a week later, they didn't launch an app, but they did launch a hashtag chamber strong marketing campaign, um, which I thought was kind of funny. And you know what? Good for them. So, you know, again, the whole point was to help the community. If, if people want to borrow or copy ideas or whatever, that's fantastic. Um, so lessons learned. Don't wait till all the details are figured out. Just get started. Um, your action will help spark others to action. It's okay to be messy. Uh, you know, I'm kind of a perfectionist, so this one kind of bugs me uh, oftentimes, but it's kind of freeing too to just, just do stuff and just launch it and not have to worry about all those details. Um, collaboration is really key. And then, again, just launch, launch as soon as you can, um, and you'll see where things go. And that is all I have. Questions, ideas, anything else? Would love to hear it. So I'm trying to address my microphone issue. First of all, I see that in the in the chat. Apparently, people care about my microphone issue. Um, how do I sound now? Do I sound any different? Good. Sounds good to me. All right. Just making sure. I I, I didn't want to uh, you know moderate the Q and A with. Uh, I mean, no one could hear me. So um, there's a couple ways we could do this. We could, uh, I think we're a small enough group where I think uh, if people want to just unmute themselves and ask a question, that'd probably yeah. be the easiest thing to do. We're not, you know, we don't, contributing things in chat would work, but I think it would just be easier to do that. So um, is, do we have the raise hand feature set up? So if someone wants to shoot Nate a question, I'm happy to uh, even creepily go in and unmute you. I have that power as an admin. Um, so uh, if, you, if you want, just raise your hand and I'll unmute you and, and introduce you and you can ask your question. Or provide an idea or whatever. Yep. Jamie, this is Natalie. Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound kind of ethereal. You're echoing in my ears, but I can hear you. One second. Yeah, there's okay, some sort I of like... First off, this is incredible. Thank you so much for putting it together. I, I can't imagine how much work you and everybody else had to do. So thank you. Um, my question or one thing that Dan and I have felt a little overwhelmed with is knowing who, I know this sounds funny, but who really needs support? Like who's really struggling right now as far as restaurants? I mean, everybody is, but is there a fair way to let the community know like, hey, if you're gonna do takeout this week, these people really need it. 
Is there, has there been any discussions around that? I know it's kind of a hard hurdle, but just want to open the floor for that discussion. I mean, my, my two cents is no, not specifically because it's, it's so hard and it's such a weird situation because everybody needs help. So, I mean, from my perspective, um, I would say every business will greatly appreciate it. Um, any help that they can get. Um, and so I know some people that have just been, um, you know, doing a couple things a week even, and will it help them stay in business? I think so. Will it like totally solve the crisis we're facing? No, not at all. Um, and unfortunately I think there's going to be more shutdowns. I hope not. I hope things turn around, but, um, yeah, I don't know if there's any good way to say like these two need help this week or this featured one. It's like everybody, there's a lot of needs. Yeah, it's it's super easy. It's super hard, you know, as as business owners to even sometimes ask for help. You know, that's that's a there's a psychological barrier there. I always make the joke that you ask someone, you know, how's your business going? The answer is always great, you know, no matter what. And um, you know, there are some businesses that are starting to be more open, especially on social media about their situation. Uh, I would say that the best, the best way is to, unfortunately, maybe in, in some people's cases, monitor, you know, social media, your favorite restaurants and, and, you know, if they post something on there, then, you know, then maybe there's a way to, to even launch your own campaign and reshare that and encourage people to do it. But uh, it, it would be, it would be a kind of a, full-time job of someone to be sort of an ambassador for this app to be constantly calling and checking in we do a weekly newsletter that we send out to everybody who signs up um, and basically it's just one question is we want you to give us updates and you know it hasn't been super successful because you know their job as a business isn't to just fill out forms for help either so it, it, it's a tough it's a tough situation yeah I mean I'd say restaurants and retail are just kind of being crushed by this um and then you know by by ripple effect it's it's impacting businesses like mine and like all of ours um you know our our new new leads have dried up on project type work pretty significantly we've got a healthy number of of easy board uh requests coming in the door but overall yeah we're we're definitely slowing down i think the the impact is going to hit all of us. It's just sort of when restaurants have been hit now for what, a month and a half or something like that a month. It's kind of hard to keep track of time anymore. <laughs> That's true. Um, anyone else want to jump in with a question? Shen, um, can, may I ask? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I think, you know, like these restaurants, like I don't feel as bad about the owner of the restaurant as, feel, as bad I feel for the employee or all the people are working there. So this seems like misdirected. Is there a way to bring in all the employee who is to work there or who lost the job under the umbrella of those restaurants so people can donate to them or like you feel like employees in these restaurants are struggling. So this is the place we need to go. Um, yeah, that's a good question. There's, there's no way in this current app, I, I think because of the, the mission of Collider Foundation to really support entrepreneurs and businesses essentially. Um, and it, and at least, I guess just speaking for myself, knowing um, being a business owner, like it's really hard. Um, to be a business owner and this just all makes it harder. Um, so while I definitely sympathize with, um, you know, like let's say employees at a restaurant, like, I don't know, you know, how are they going to pay their bills? I don't know. Um, it's really rough right now, but I know some business owners too that are being absolutely crushed and um, don't have a bunch of resources sitting around. And if they don't, if things don't get turned around, nobody's going to have a job, um, at their business, their business won't exist anymore. So, um, anyway, I, I think I, I sympathize with your, your question and your concern for sure. But, um, and again, this isn't, this isn't like, a this isn't going to solve everything. 
Um, we're just really just like focused on kind of one piece of the puzzle here um, and trying to do what we can to help in an area that, that we have resources and connections to, to hopefully make an impact. Thank you. Hey, look, Stefan raised his hand. Can I say we use, we use Zoom for all the class stuff now, so I'm just like, we no, know all the buttons. It's uh, perfect. Wait till we start using breakout rooms. Yay. So anyways, <laughs> my question actually isn't really for you, Nate. It's really more of a question to the group and, and like a group of people who are in the space trying to tackle these problems. And so we've, I think you guys have done a phenomenal job of at least bringing attention to all the groups that need help. I'm curious if there's any interest in like a concerted effort to helping some of the groups that are listing that that don't necessarily have like the IT infrastructure to support online ordering or to support the ability to even do takeout because they don't know how to take orders in an effective fashion. Or the groups that are trying to take orders that are, I think Blue Duck sold me a Christmas dinner this past weekend instead of Easter dinner because <laughs> their online ordering system is a little fritzy to say the least. Um, but closing that gap for those companies that are especially struggling with both the new world of not being the business they originally signed up to do and the technology gap that's allowing other businesses to at least limp along far less than to say survive. Um, have there been any thoughts to how we might help get these guys set up with a, a reasonable solution or maybe a more generalized yeah. platform for that? Yeah. So um, just speaking for myself, I know it's something that has been talked about and our team has been and continues to offer completely free video consulting meetings just like this to just listen, hear what their challenges are, what are they trying to accomplish and then provide recommendations and even on the call, try to set some stuff up or fix some things. Um, I've had maybe like eight of those calls so far, some with nonprofits and some with businesses. So if you know of people that would like a helping hand or like a call, send them our way. There's no strings attached. We've been just providing free help. That's uh, awesome, man. That's really great. Oh, so, cool. Thank you. And yeah. at the same time, I mean, Nate, Nate is uh, exceptionally talented, but he can only, you know, do so much work. So, you know, if anybody has questions about anything business related, I mean, that's one of the roles of the Collider Foundation. So we want to make sure that you reach out to us and, we can direct you. We're not going to probably make an awesome website or make your e-commerce better, but we could probably get you to someone yes, who could. Will, so <laughs> I'm all about e-commerce. That's my thing. <laughs> and TV shows. And, and yeah, webinar, webish TV shows. Yeah. And I know it's been interesting too. Like I've mentioned that offer a couple times and I've had multiple IT and creative people reach out to me and say, Hey, if you get more requests than you can handle, like I'm raising my hand, I'll help. Um, so that's been super cool. We, currently we, we don't have as many requests as we don't have more requests. We can handle them. No problem. Um, but I can't help but think there are businesses that do need help, but they're just, they don't really know. It's just kind of a, connecting the dots. They're, they're stressed. They're working hard. They're just trying to figure out the basics. Yeah, there's that unknown unknowns problem where I'm like, I don't even think they they know what to ask to get the problem solved. Yeah. Um, which has been interesting to observe. But yeah, yeah, that's great to know that you're a resource and can point them there if that's possible. Yeah, happy to. And and something I'm really excited about as well is the you know, doing these micro grants, um, I think that's gonna get us in contact with a lot of other people as well. Uh, that can learn more about how the community can help. I think sometimes, you know, people think of being a small business owner as the most isolating thing in the world. And, um, you know, that, that it doesn't need to be that way. That's something we've always said at Collider. We want, we want the community to, to really be, a, you know, a unified front and, and helping each other. So um, I'm hoping that these micro grants actually lead to some, some interesting, uh, you know, developing relationships and being able to plug them into the community to help them. Yeah. Well, thanks Other everybody. Questions. 
I was just say thanks for everybody for uh, joining the call. I, I was hoping it wasn't just going to be me, Jamie, and Amanda talking about the thing that we built to ourselves. No, we did that enough a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and I, needed like, a, I needed a Zoom break from uh, you for at least a week. Me too. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions? Uh, otherwise, I'm going to make uh, I'm going to make Nate climb the wall behind him. <laughs> sure. It's pretty small. It's designed for kids, but it works, you know, it's a bouldering wall. Anybody else? Looks like Shannon's got a pretty cool whiteboard project planning thing going on there. Something. Just big sticky notes with more sticky notes on it, trying to use uh, my dining room wall as my new workspace. Oh. Not near as clever as what you've got going on. Hey, that works. Yeah, I've got my, I'm, I'm using the, uh, the kids whiteboard for my new nice. project planning whiteboard. Yeah. <laughs> they came in today and, and they wanted to draw on it and I had to show them like this little corner they could draw on. And... <laughs> <laughs> They're like, daddy, why'd you draw on this? Well, you know. For fun. Yeah. Nice work, Nate. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah, no, we appreciate, I think, I think all good things happen through collaboration and this is no exception. So it was cool to, cool to do. And like I said, like the first day when you proposed the idea, I didn't even know how we were going to do it. Um, and then I got, went through like the, the idea I'm excited. Great. Now what am I doing? I'm stuck. And then, Oh, yay, we did it sort of phase. I'll ask one more question. If there's, there's none other, I'll ask you, Nate. What's a feature that you'd like to see in the, if you would have started this from scratch uh, and did it again? Uh, this is not a trick question to trick you into building a new feature at this point. So I, I want that's to- That's right. Uh, at least not from me anyways. Yeah, is, is this a question about the app or a question about like the whole world in general right now? <laughs> I mean the app specifically, but I'll take any answer. It's okay. a pretty open-ended okay. question. Um, I, I don't know. I, I would, I really would do it the exact same way. Um, the, uh, the platform that we used has definitely turned out to be the right platform and to the way that all the pieces are wired together. Um, cause there's no way you could have done something this quick otherwise. Um, and the whole thing is driven behind the scenes by, uh, Google sheets. Um, so it's super easy for Amanda and Jamie to update content. Um, I don't think I mentioned it, but if you check out glide apps, glide apps that's what we use to build this thing cool um and uh yeah it worked worked pretty great um what would i do differently yeah again i don't i don't know okay, what was the hardest part then that was a, that was a mean question <laughs> hardest part was definitely figuring out how to use the thing off the shelf that looks all magical in their demos and actually make it your thing and like do what you want to do with it. That's always hard. You know, the, the demos of the shiny product are always, you know, the perfect demo and it For does sure. all these amazing things. And then you actually try to build with it and you're like, you know, what is this thing? Um, so it took, it took a little bit to wrap my head around, like, how does this actually work? How are all these pieces wired together that, and like an app running off a of Google spreadsheet, like it's kind of weird, Interesting. but it, it works like every each tab of the spreadsheet is a tab of the app so your spreadsheet is the database it's huh. funky but it works and then it's really easy to maintain yeah, I, th I think building on that i i was i was excited because i mean i don't know how much everybody knows about me but my first startup was a tech startup and i had absolutely no, um, you know, only my friends knew what I was building, right? There wasn't a lot of traction there. And the cool thing was the first time in, in this collaboration was the first time on the tech side that I've helped develop anything where I've heard a conversation happening near me when people were saying, oh, I just used this really cool app to order dinner so I could support a local restaurant. And that's when I knew we were onto something you know, with no pushing or promotion, uh, someone was just having a conversation about, oh, you should use this really cool app. And I was like, 
what, what's that app called? And they're like, Rot Strong. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so that was really exciting just to see that something we created um, yeah. got out there and, and really got the adoption very, very fast that um, really needed to help, you know, find. And I think Google actually has come out with an update recently. Um, if you do like a, a Google search for a restaurant, they're doing more granular stuff with takeout and, and identifying DoorDash and things like that. So, you know, our numbers are, 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 are slipping a little and I'm, I, cause, because I'm seeing stuff like that start to pop up um, from some of the bigger players. But I think we were, you know, for a time, I think we were a great kind of, we were the alternative at the beginning that, that at least was a little bit usable. So um, yeah, I, I, I was excited about this project. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Little did Jamie know, I'd had no idea how to build it on day one. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of embarrassing, but whatever. <laughs> at, least, but at least when you were asked what you would do again, it wasn't, uh, I would never work with Jamie again. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> no, I, I would work with Jamie again. I would just, just not let him touch the code. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go there. You, you don't want to see some really bad Ruby on Rails, which is about the only thing I know how to do. Hey, anymore. that's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm not easily embarrassed, Jamie. I'm like totally over it. I've had enough embarrassing things happen in my life and you know, so I could care less. Well, any last questions? Thoughts, comments? This is our first attempt at this. So, you know, it's a, as anything, we're kind of uh, always doing pilots now. It seems like with everything we're doing. So, <clears throat> um, so thank you, everyone. And we'll see you at the next 1 Million Cups.